Today, Adiyogi will be giving you a Divya Darshan, something that you have not seen till today. I wish all of you the very best for Mahasivratri as well as for all future endeavors. Namaskaram to everyone. It's our profound privilege and pride to have the Honorable President of India here. Welcome, sir, to Isha Yoga Center. And uh, Honorable Governors, Ministers of the State and Union, and many other dignitaries, and above all, the devotees of Shiva who are here. Welcome to all of you. Adiyogi, though a historical figure, he is not of the past but of the future because never before humanity was psychologically and socially ready to approach their well-being in a scientific manner. So this is what Adiyogi represents. 112 different ways in which you can approach your well-being. If you're seeking well-being, in is the only way out. Whatever you think are limits of nature, all those limits can be crossed if only you're willing to strive. This is the fundamental message of Adiyogi. And today, Adiyogi will be giving you a Divya Darshan something that you have not seen till today. <laughs> Are you ready, eh? Now, the Honorable President will unveil the Divya Darshanam. All of you, keep your eyes on Adiyogi. Fifteen thousand years ago, a being appeared in the upper regions of Himalayas. The origins of this spectacular being were unknown. People saw that he was experiencing dimensions that no one had ever known or able to fathom. His ecstasy and intensity allowed him to transcend his physical form. Witnessing an individual human in union with the cosmos, they called him a yogi. As he was the first one, the Adi Yogi. He transmitted the profound signs of yoga in its full depth and damage. It was a vision of the very core of the cosmos in all its profundity and magnificence. Devi Parvati, seeing Adiyogi, reveling in ecstatic states, said, I want to have what you have. Show me the way. Adi Yogi absorbed her and made her a part of himself and hence he is the Ardhanari, the ideal man where one half of him is woman.
seven sages, the Saptarishis, took the sacred science of yoga in all its forms to human habitations across the planet, which turned into crucibles of civilization. This spectacular being is not of the past, but the future of humanity. To move humanity from hallucinations of ups and downs to nameless ecstasies of one's interiority. Probably no other nation has as many diverse festivals and celebrations as we have. Among our festivals, Mahasivaratri is one of the most endearing, enduring and significant. We are at the foothills of the Viliyangiri Mountains, the Dakshin Kailas or Kailas of the South. The visit here today completes a spiritual cycle for me. I am experiencing the very same feelings that I had experienced on myself when I visited Kailas Mansarovar. This event that Sadhguru has conceived is an opportunity to experience the grace of Mahasivaratri. There is another connection that comes to mind. It is believed that Lord Shiva helped bring the mighty Ganga to us and Sadhguru has been among those who are rallying to rejuvenate our rivers. <laughs> Protection of our rivers and environment is a very noble and worthy objective. I am glad that Sadhguru has made this objective a part of his mission. I am extremely happy to see so many young faces here today. Sadhguru has emerged as a spiritual bridge that brings our long cherished values, wisdom and knowledge to the youth of today in a language that they understand. As I conclude, I congratulate Sadhguru and all the volunteers of ISA Foundation who would have worked for making this event so grand. I wish all of you the very best for Mahasivratri as well as for all future endeavors. Thank you and Jai Hind. Vithala, Vithala 
This is the twenty-fifth year of Mahashivratri here at Isha Yoga Center. The significance of this day and this night is who we are, where we are structured physically, is a consequence of the way the planetary system is made. If you're sensitive, for different days of the month, there are different things happening in nature, and whatever is happening in nature is also happening in this body. This particular night, there is a very strong upsurge of energy in the northern hemisphere. The maximum upward or centrifugal movement is happening at eleven degrees north latitude, and that's exactly where you're sitting right now. And also, these Velangiri mountains are known as the Kailash of the south because Adiyogi himself spent nearly three and a half months up on this mountain. Midnight is coming, we don't want to miss the sandhya, so we will do the Maha Mantra that the whole universe is just sound. In this complex amalgamation of sounds, there are a few key sounds and it can open up a whole new world for you. That is what a key means. Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Shiva means that which is not. If you have to have a taste of that which is not, you have to keep aside that which is, which is you. The simple way to approach your stillness is just uh, on this Mahashivratri night, by your choice, don't tell anybody, by yourself, you pick something that you're compulsive about and see if you can just keep it away. Maybe it's food, maybe it's sleep, maybe it's clothing, maybe it's sexuality, maybe anything. Whatever you're compulsive about, just pick one thing and see if you can just keep it aside. If you just do something as simple as that, you will notice stillness will begin to happen to you by its own nature. Shambha 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 